I, I became a working journalist in 2014. And my first story that I ever covered and embedded with was in, in Ferguson, Missouri, I, just after Mike Brown was shot. And it left me kind of scarred and a bit brutalized. And it left all of us kind of scarred and a bit brutalized. Um, Ryan Riley and Wesley Lowry were arrested while they were sitting in a McDonald's filing in the middle of the day. The police there, I thought, were going to be the, the most egregious example, I thought, of, of, of the, the repression of speech, of the repression of protest, of the repression of, of, of every protection of the First Amendment. They were not respecters of clergy. They were not respecters of assembly. And I thought that was going to be the worst that I saw. Um, I embedded out at Malheur at the Wildlife Refuge back in 2016 when the Bundys just staged an armed rebellion for funsies, I guess. And I thought that that was going to be the most federal power I ever saw brought to bear on a story that I covered. Um, it was less violent. It was nicer. The, it, it was polite. But I thought that was going to be the, the most I was ever going to cover. And then I went to Minneapolis and I spent my first night darting in and out of structure fires, taking just the amazing amount of photo roll I have that's just flames. Um, and on my second night, I had been out for three or four hours um, when I walked up on, on an active police line and very clearly taking photos. I mean, I had a, a whole Nikon with a whole flash. Um, I very clearly was not part of a protest group. I was a photographer working in that middle bit of protests where photographers always reside. And I have photos of these police officers casually drawing down, casually loading a compressed foam round into their gun, casually pointing it at me. While other officers just feet away are apparently on their cell phones and talking to each other. Like there, there was no world in which all of these officers thought I was a threat. And so I think that Minneapolis now might be the most power and the most repression that I'll ever see brought to bear on one of my stories. But I keep saying that, and it's a worrying trend. And I think that we're gonna have to reckon with it as an industry of, of the risks that we are taking, of the fact that these risks keep changing, of the fact that these risks keep increasing, because it used to be that you could go cover a story and there would be some respect for the fact that you were out there doing your job, the same as these police are out there doing their job. That line seems to be breaking, and I don't know if it's because it's years worth of us being called fake. I don't know if it's because of, of the, the change in the political climate. I don't know if it's just because we have shiny new weapons and shiny new weapons programs to fund the police with. But something has fundamentally changed. And I think that we're going to have to reckon with that both for ourselves and for our colleagues, because what we don't want is, is a, a society in which every member of the press is a economically and physically not sure of what's going to happen next. We don't want a world in which that chilling effect and, and that, that professional community is broken and that chilling effect comes in because then we stop covering the stories that matter. And the stories that matter are, are the ones where people are being broken and brutalized. And, and, and there is a place for every single beat in journalism, but it's very few beats where you might get shot in the face. And so we do have to pay, I think, extra special attention to covering these risky stories, to covering the stories that, that put us as workers at risk. And I think that we need to be thinking about how do we handle the change in, in our industry in a way that is supportive of us as workers and us as risk takers. So I want to say thank you so much to all of my colleagues 
And, and I want to pay special attention to all of the journalists specifically who have been hurt this year, who have been arrested, who have been wounded. I want to say thank you, especially to my mate, Will Sands, who is another photographer who lost an eye to a police bullet or a police projectile. And we don't talk about him enough because I got the first headlines and we all know how the cycle works. So Will Sands from Washington, DC, you can find his work in Mother Jones. He's doing amazing work actually around blind people and people who have been shot. Um, and I want to say particularly thanks to um, Peter Callahan and Dominic Gwynn, who have been my partners uh, in, in St. Louis and uh, elsewhere. Um, and all of the boys in Chicago, you know who you are. I finally got my own damn camera and then they shot me in the face. So you guys win. <laughs>